Hello, NISOA Nation. Today is Tuesday, July 7th, 2020. And we're pleased to bring our membership another edition of the NISOA Summer Educational Series. My name is Lance Van Heitzma, NISOA Senior Director of Operations. And we have Tori Penso, I think she's that way, uh, NISOA Managing Director, and we will be your moderators for tonight's webinar. Uh, tonight's event follows the recent TED Talk by Ted Uncle, focusing on penalty area incidences. The recording can be found on NISOA's YouTube channel. The NISOA Summer Educational Series will run through August with a variety of programs that will help serve our members from a detailed focus on the new rules changes to topic-specific professional development opportunities like tonight with some of the best instructors around uh, within the collegiate game. And we also have one more joint clinic with our partners at ECSR in August. We are thrilled to continue to offer experiences that engage, educate, and inspire our members to be better every game. But before we start, and before I introduce uh, today's special clinician, uh, I'm gonna toss it over to Tori for some uh, ground rules on engagement. Thanks, Lance. Hi, everybody. Hello from Utah. I hope everyone's doing really well. I see we've got 136 in the room and growing. So I just added a little chat in the chat room. So if you're not familiar with Zoom, if you look down at the bottom, there is a chat feature. And if you click on that, you'll be able to chat and, and engage with other attendees. So I just said roll call. So go ahead and put in where you're from and your name. Um, we get a little, little conversation started that way. Um, but we're excited for today's conversation with Mark Katalisic, one of the best in the biz. And we're excited to, to learn a little bit more about communication with devices and how to do that effectively. Um, but there's a couple things. We want you guys to certainly um, be engaged and be a part of the conversation. While we don't have video on, so you're just an attendee, so we can't see your video. So you don't have to worry about if your video is showing or not, we won't see you. Um, we may unmute certain attendees for conversation. Um, so be alert and ready for that because we do have a few discussions. We're not going to use polls tonight, but we may use the chat feature. So um, if you look and find the chat feature, it should be down at the bottom. There's another feature I want to call out if you're not familiar with Zoom. There is a Q&A feature at the bottom and you can see it, it says Q&A. And so the difference between Q&A and chat, chat is really just conversation amongst yourselves. And then in the Q&A, you should be able to click and ask us a specific question. And either Lance or myself might answer it, or we might redirect it to Mark um, if he'd like to answer it as well. So if you have any questions specific for us, use the Q&A feature. And if you just wanna chat and have some banter, go ahead and use the chat feature. Okay, so those are a couple of different ways that you can get engaged, um, be a part of the conversation today. Uh, and I'll hand it off to Lance to introduce our speaker. Thank you, Tori. Uh, with that said, we are excited to have an individual like Mark Katalesic on the show. Uh, tonight will also be known as Cat's Corner because we had TED Talk, so it's Cat's Corner. Uh, a little bit of background for those that don't know Mark, which many people do because Mark has grown up as a referee in the NISOA family. Uh, Mark has been a NISOA referee, I think, for pretty close to 20 years, or you're approaching 20 years now as a college referee. Uh, Mark is currently the Pro 2 referee coach at PRO. He's a current NISO national referee. He has done many NCAA finals, but the spotlight, the, the biggest match would be the 2016 Division I Men's College Cup final uh, as a referee. So again, we are pleased to have Mark Catalesic. Mark, thank you for taking your time out of your busy schedule. Uh, I know with both uh, professional leagues starting up, one in the middle of the season and the other one about to start, you're an extremely busy person. So we really do agree, appre greatly appreciate your time. Well, Lance, to be honest, it's an honor to be a part of this. Uh, you know, as you said, I kind of grew up with the NISOA family, if you will. Uh, John Vandervarst taught my very first referee course in Pensacola, New Jersey, longtime NISOA president. For many years, I did summer amateur ball in South New Jersey with George Westcott being a big mentor of mine. And then when I moved down to North Carolina to attend college there and, and start my professional career in education, Roger Morton was a huge influence to my um, referee career. So without those guys, I obviously wouldn't be in some of the places I've been, luckily, in my career. Uh, obviously, in North Carolina, we are a hotbed with collegiate soccer. So very blessed to be part of this and uh, obviously be a part of this presentation tonight. So, you know, it's kind of interesting, you know, communication devices and teamwork. This is something that if we look in the law book, we look at a lot of the guidance for officials, you can't really find it. So tonight, what I hope everybody does, you know, we always hear in a presentation, you take away one thing. Well, my goal tonight is for you to all to take away three things. 
And if you can do that, I feel it's a job well done and, and a mission accomplished. So, Doug, if we can go to our PowerPoint, we'll start it right now. So as you look in our agenda tonight, obviously we're going to talk about the primary purpose of communication devices. And I know, especially in the collegiate game, they're becoming a lot more prevalent. But I also want to make sure that we emphasize what we need to talk about in the pregame with them. You know, one of the things I love that NICELA has done is they've merged their considerations with FIFA. And believe it or not, communication, if you look at the most up-to-date version of the considerations, actually talks about communication and you can really relate them to the communication devices. So we will talk about those and how we can put those into practice as well. We are going to do a clip exercise. And then Tori mentioned, you know, this may become the interactive part here. So I want to make sure that everybody's in tune with that. And we will bring on some people who I have contacted to look at some clips and talk out maybe what some of the communication will look like. Uh, we'll do a quick summary. And then if I can answer any questions here, be of service for any of the people on this broadcast tonight, obviously I would be honored to do that. So let's go ahead and get started with the next slide, Doug. Well, maybe with the exception of my wife, you know, most of us can maybe relate to this very little analogy here. If we have something that we need to hang up in our house and we need to go and maybe put a, a drywall screw in, if we look to our left, obviously we can use a good old fashioned Phillips head screwdriver. But if we look to our right, I think we would all prefer to use the power drill. So basically they do the same thing. But one of them, I think, makes the job a little easier. So if we go to our next slide, the reason I bring this analogy to you is because, look, no matter what, we can still officiate a match with flags and a whistle and some cards. But isn't it a lot easier when we have the headsets? Let's be mindful that the headsets, though, shouldn't be the primary things that we do in terms of mechanics and standard procedure. It's just something like the power drill that we can do to make our job easier. So that's the thing I kind of want to implant with us tonight, that yes, the communication devices can be a wonderful tool, but it's not going to be the means to everything that we need to do when we get out on the pitch. So, Doug, if we can go to the next slide as well. So let's think a little bit about the primary purpose of the communication devices. And a lot of the material tonight that you see here has been borrowed from James Conley, Joe Fletcher, and Mark Geiger. They were nice enough to let me use some of their content. So if we start here with the primary purpose, again, the communication devices are intended to help members of the referee team to better assist one another. Just think of it like this. It's the power drill. It's not the Phillips head screwdriver. It's not meant to replace the basic signal mechanics. And we need to make sure that we're uh, in tune here. In the event that these go out, we still need to use standard mechanics. So don't just think that, okay, we're using headsets today. We're good to go. There is situations, and we've already experienced it out here in Utah, where the headsets will go out. So what do we need to do? We need to go back to the basics, please. And one of the things I really want to emphasize, and I've started to see this a lot lately in the modern game with officiating, is because we have headsets, one of the things I think we're really missing the boat on is using eye contact before we even talk. Let's not lose that particular mechanic. For me, when we talk about the headsets, it should always be, eye contact, then headsets, then go to the flag if needed. So just something to think about, basic mechanics. Doug, if we can go to the next slide, please. I gotta be honest with you, and I know it gets tough. We get into the college season, especially in midweek games, we're going and sometimes we're hitting traffic and things like that. But if you know you're going to a match and you're gonna be using headsets, you better tackle on at least 15 more minutes to your pregame discussion, at least. We must discuss how we're going to use the comms during the pregame because the way that Lance wants them used differs the way that Tori wants them used. And we can go right down the line. The three or four of you have got to get on the same page and don't be afraid to ask questions. So some of the things maybe we talk about, um, even though you're working with somebody you've worked with before, you know, what are some of the things that people want during the game that they want to talk about? And that's some of the things I want to offer tonight. And the big thing, again, discuss what to do if the system fails during a match. What do we do? We all obviously go back to basic mechanics, but there's some other things that maybe we need to be mindful of as well. If we go to the next slide, Doug. So here's some of the things that we're going to topic here, and this is straight from the FIFA and NISOA considerations. If you look here, we're going to talk about communication with small details. One of the things, and you'll, again, if you revert to the NISOA and FIFA considerations, the referee does take the lead in the decision. The referee decides first. 
you know, a lot of times I, th- I hear referees when they get the headset and they just think it's an open forum for them to just start talking. And sometimes that actually can confuse the crew. So we need to make sure that we also split responsibilities of control and maybe think about, hey, where on the field do I need to inject myself? A big thing with communication devices is simple language. You know, sometimes the communication cuts out. You only hear fragments of the communication. So we need to make sure that it's clear and concise. And then one thing I really want to emphasize is, look, I understand we get excited. We have a headset. We're the assistant referee. We're the alternate official. We want to go and help that referee out. But be mindful of the referee's position, because if that referee is in a more credible position, they may be seeing a different thing than you are. So really, sometimes we only need to interject ourselves after we've made that eye contact, we've considered the referee's position, and then maybe think that that referee missed something. That's maybe when we need to step up, not just go ahead and insert ourselves. So I talked about earlier, communication must, it absolutely must be clear, must be concise, and it must be correct. And I wish we could add another word that is a C there, but I also want to add in there timeliness. The timeliness of it needs to be important as well. So when we start talking about things like a simple boundary decision, and we're saying white, 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 that's clear, concise, and correct. The one thing we want to avoid is using the word no. As we mentioned before, sometimes, unfortunately, the communication systems, they cut out. So if we hear, for for instance, no foul, and the word no cuts out, now the referee may think they have a foul, and they may prematurely, incorrectly punish an offense. So please, let's avoid the negatives. If you want to say maybe on an offside decision, if the player was off or on, simply say on, on, on. Let's avoid the negatives, okay? So no foul. Don't need to say it. Just keep quiet, actually, and consider the referee's proximity to the decision. Doug, to the next one, please. You know, Mark, uh, just a quick question here, too, is try to refrain. uh, And Mark was alluding to this, too. Try to refrain from words that sound alike. You know, like in, in, in part of my pregame, too, is what I include is, you know, if the player is on side, you can either say on or I like to say good. They're good because sometimes when you have a stadium, sometimes when it's loud or sometimes the mics don't work, sometimes that that on could sound like off or especially if you're in front of the bench. Right. In front of the technical areas that could sound like that. So like as Marcus said, there's more than one tool to use. And it comes back to pregame. You've got to use the pregame. Don't underestimate your time in the pregame. Well said, Lance. And again, if you're having communication devices, I'm telling you, it's got to be at least 15 minutes that you're adding in terms of what your expectations are for everyone in the crew. So let's get into the consideration now of split responsibilities. The timing of any input is just as important as the timing of the advice being given. We need to be mindful, assistant referees, that if a referee is highly concentrated or already involved in a decision, let's avoid talking then. What we mean by that, okay? If we've got something going on in the penalty area, we got two players taking on each other, an offender and attacker, this is not the time for you to say, hey, we have a sub. That's not the time. So consider also the timeliness of the input you're giving because we don't want to distract the referee as well. If you notice the referee has to maybe manage a situation, avoid talking when the referee is in a crowd. And the reason being is because obviously the referee is being challenged. At that time, if you're trying to talk, they may not pick up on what you're saying. So therefore, what you're trying to get across as information may not be relayed. So pick your moments, and especially in the college game, we have the luxury of stopping the clock. Anytime we bang our wrists, we can buy time there. So use that as a tool, referees, as well. And ARs, be mindful of that. Don't just go and insert yourself when you don't need to. And lastly, and and this is really something I know that may be seeming pretty as a joke here, but suggesting a caution after play has restarted isn't helpful. It's kind of like when we always talk about without using a headset, we get back in the locker room and someone says, well, I had a caution on that play. Listen, not saying we have to go and hold up the game, but pick that moment after the dust has settled, so to speak, to go ahead and give the information if you feel it's need, needed in the game. So, Doug, if we can go to the next one. So I'd like to thank my, my colleague across the hall here, Slash in Utah, Tori. She really helped me out with this chart here, and it really does kind of help 
some sort of simplify some of the situations in which we talk about split situ- split responsibilities. So, for instance, if we have a throw in, what I would suggest is say the jersey color of the team that will be taking the throw, corner, or goal kick. Now, I know some of you may be comfortable saying corner, 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 or goal kick, goal kick, goal kick. But, you know, some referees I hear, they just like the simple preference of white, 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 or red, 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 no matter what the outcome of the restart will be. So I think that's something that is something could be helpful to the referee. What we can't say, though, is we have a boundary decision and you absolutely say, I've got nothing. Maybe instead we say, hey, I need help here if we're the assistant referee and the referee's making the decision. And then kind of the unwritten rule, if we have a boundary decision and nobody sure is what it is, give the safe decision of an 80-yard throw-in. No one's going to die from that. How about this? A tight decision on the goal line or on the touch line. I would suggest, say, play or keep playing. So play, play, play. What we don't want to say is of uh, the word in. We don't want to say in, 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 because all of a sudden, if we have a decision in front of the goal and somebody is saying in, in, in from the line as an assistant referee, the referee may think that was a ball in the net and all of a sudden we're awarding a goal. So to avoid that situation, the advice given here would be play, play, play. One thing I think it's very helpful for referees and assistant referees, if you're instructed by the referee to do this, it can be very helpful, is when we have a restart. If you could say ball or ball in play, this makes the referee aware that the ball is in play. Now, you may think, well, what's the significance or what's maybe the magnitude of having this? Think about if you have a corner kick. If the, ref, if the assistant referee says ball in, now we know if there is an offense, the restart will be a penalty penalty kick and not a corner kick. So one that I think is very helpful if the referee wants this in their game is for assistant referees to say ball or ball in play. And then lastly, this is one we, the AR kind of maybe has to take the lead here. The AR is unsure who played it last on an offside decision. So now we're getting into the flexion versus deliberate play. So if we go there, the referee may get something from the AR that says help, help, help. So one thing that I would avoid, and ironically, we had this in our game the other night, is don't use the word who, because that really is too open-ended. But if we go with help, 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 that's really narrowing down the communication that says, look, I'm the AR in this case here. I'm not sure who played it last. And hopefully the referee can pick up on that and then say defender or whatever other cue that they have there. So Doug, if we could, let's go and to the first video tonight. And for those of you who are RWISOA members, I see Ziegler signing in on the chat here. And I know Richard is probably on the call and he should be very proud of the job that he has done with the uh, programs he put together. I know I listened to them when I was walking my dog every Saturday morning. This is something I stole from them. And this is Corey Rockwell, who I know will be coming on in the next presentation here for the NISOA Summer Series. And what I really like about this is Corey just took a simple 45-second part of a game. And mind you, we're talking Corey Rockwell here, assistant referee at the World Cup. And he kind of just gave some of the things that he would say here during a simple 45 minutes, 45-second, nothing happening type of part of the game. So, Doug, if you would go ahead and play this, let's see what Corey has some advice for on this clip. Um, So... But pretend like I'm AR on here, and I'm going to tell you what I would say if I was AR during this run of play right here. So the first thing we have is a goalkeeper gathering it. And one thing I may say, or Brian may say, is that, hey, we have two people up top. You know, that way the referee knows, okay, get back upfield because if she does a quick punt, uh, you need to be ready for this counterattack. So that's the first thing I would say as AR, just two up top, very simple. So the goalkeeper has it. Now, as the AR, the trail AR over here across from the goalkeeper, I may say balls in just so the referee doesn't, while he or she is sprinting upfield, doesn't have to look over uh, their shoulder. Ball goes out, I'll say white, 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 and show the signal. Referee may be downfield, maybe a quick balls in might be nice here, and then we know the ball is in play. I'm staying quiet because AR, as an AR, there's really nothing to stay at this point. 
Here's another situation where I may say something is the AR over here. So the ball is played back to the goalkeeper. And so I'll, I'll give uh, three things. I'll talk about the pressure. So I may say as the ball is being played back, no pressure. All right. That was the referee. know, OK, I can get ready for the next phase of, pray, of play. I can get back up field because there's no pressure right here on the goalie right now. If there's a defender maybe slowly checking in, I may say light pressure just so the referee is aware, OK, he or she may need to come back downfield in case light pressure turns into the what would be the third thing I say, which is heavy pressure. And if I say heavy pressure, if there's an attacker sprinting at the goalkeeper with the ball at her feet, heavy pressure means as a referee, you can't set up for next phase of play. You got to get back down here in case something happens because we don't want a collision or something to happen while the referee's standing at midfield. All right. That's just another little thing you can give while play is back there. So I've said no pressure, situation hasn't changed. And the ball come uh, back up field. That's just a little insight of what you can do during a very ordinary run of play um, what, and some basics for the communication devices. Thank you, Doug. So, Doug, if we can go back to the previous slide real quick. So, you know, so hopefully that put in perspective a lot of what was in words here, what Corey said. Sure, there was a lot more higher level things like he talked about pressure on the ball and things like that. He also talked about sometimes when to be quiet. And that's very important because, again, when the referee is in the middle, they're very hyper focused. And therefore, any sort of maybe distraction there could throw off the focus there. So my advice to you going forward, you know, the boundary decisions, that's an easy one. Maybe thinking ball in play or ball and a restart. That's an easy one as well. Those more advanced concepts like pressure, 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 or things of that nature, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, then look, don't get out of your, don't get in your uh, comfort zone thinking you have to do that. But if you do feel comfortable doing that, talk to your referee before the game. Hey, is this something that you would want on this situation? Again, as an AR, you can't ask enough questions, especially nowadays when we have the communication devices. Thank you, Doug. If we can go to the next slide. All right, so now we're building again on this theme of the consideration of split responsibilities. One of the things the AR could do with the referee is advise the referee about persistent offenses or players being targeted. You know, again, the referee, a lot of times, especially in the collegiate game, where we've got to worry about the clock, we've got numerous sub opportunities. One of the things that maybe sometimes can get lost in the shuffle is if we have a player who is maybe as a forward and keeps getting fouled or a player who just keeps committing fouls. Well, again, that A and AR stands for assist. One of the things that you can do is say, hey, Lance, that's number eight's third foul. Be mindful of that. Or, hey, Tori, number nine up top, that's the third time she's been fouled. This is something, again, that you can assist with the referee. And again, maybe the referee doesn't want this. I think most of them do. But as an AR, don't be afraid to ask if this would be something they would want when you're having your pregame. Here's another little thing here with split responsibilities. And I think most referees would appreciate this, but again, ask the crew before the game if you're the AR or the fourth official. If the referee plays advantage, I think most referees would appreciate either the trail AR or the fourth saying, okay, that was number four who committed that foul. Now we maybe get thus settled. There's a goal kick, there's a corner kick. You can go back and say, oh, listen, hey, that was number five on the foul. Now, look, that doesn't mean the referee needs to go and act and give you a caution or go back and talk to the player. But guess what? That also is helpful to say, OK, well, that player committed a foul. And even though I didn't necessarily blow the whistle for it, that's something I need to put in that player's profile potentially for persistent offenses. So, again, little things like this can help the referee if you're the assistant referee or the fourth when we talk about PO or playing advantage. Doug, if we could, the next one. Let's talk a little bit about offside and, and using simple language here. So if we have a situation where there's potential offside and the player is in offside position, one of the things that the ref, AR can do to the referee is use the term waiting or position number 15. This is very helpful to the referee because now they can say, okay, maybe I need to get an angle here to go and make sure there's not a potential foul offense or something like that. If the player is offside, okay, once we get that language of, hey, I'm waiting, position 19, and as the AR, you've made the judgment that they've become in play, offside, offside, offside would be the recommended language there. 
hey, listen, if the player is onside, use something as simple as good, good, good. I would say this. Let's avoid saying onside. Reason being is because, again, Lance brought up the fact maybe we get in crowded situations. Maybe there's a huge crowd there. Maybe the mics are just, for whatever reason, at a low volume and we can't get to halftime quick enough to adjust them. Then look, then it's going to be something that is going to maybe sound like offside. And the worst thing that we could have happen is you have somebody prematurely blowing the whistle for offside when really the flag never went up. So again, good, 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 position, position, waiting, et cetera, et cetera. Now, we talk about now the referee's position in view. If the AR or fourth official sees a foul that the referee may not see, the AR or fourth official can say foul, foul, foul. But ladies and gentlemen on this call tonight, please do me a favor. Before we just react to saying foul, 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 let's again go back to our basic principles. Eye contact. Let's see where the referee is. Does that referee have a credible position? Well, maybe they do, but they maybe don't just don't have the angle. If you feel that this is something that the game needs, by all means, give the information foul, foul, foul. But I really want us to get into the habit of not just reacting with the communication system. I would really prefer that we give the eye contact first. Another thing to consider there, if we look at the second bullet, if the AR or fourth official is in a more credible position or has the best angle, the AR should flag for the offense or the fourth can alter their position to indicate the offense. Let's be honest. The referee is not going to go run 10 yards in front of the corner flag when the AR is there. So if the referee is calling a foul, we still want to have the AR maybe potentially mirror the decision. But if the AR is giving the lead on this decision, they shouldn't just say foul, foul, foul and rely on the referee to just give the indication of which way the offense is going. They should also be raising the flag because when they do this, this minimizes the scent. Think about it. If you have two players jostling for the ball underneath the AR's nose, and all of a sudden the referee calls the offense from 25 to 30 yards away, chances are the players are going to turn around to the AR and say, hey, what are you even doing here? So without even having that happen, think about it. By the time they turn around to do that, if you've got the flag up, that minimizes the opportunity for them to dissent there. So again, fouls in front of the AR should be supported with standard flag mechanics, please. Again, and back to the theme of basic mechanics tonight. Doug, the next slide, please. So uh, listen, as you heard with Corey, there's a ton of other things you can do. There's a ton of other situations out there. I know this. And that's why it's very difficult as we start using the communication systems and they are evolving for us to go and think of every little thing. But if we think about the game in front of us, maybe we know some of the things that the, the teams do because we've seen them previously. Then look, bring up the fact that, look, I know that the team from West Florida likes to play a short corner kick. What do you want me to do to say ball in or not? If you know those little nuances of the game, talk about it with the crew if you're the referee, the AR, or the alternate official, and therefore everybody's on the same page. You know, the old saying is, if you don't talk about it, it's going to happen. And if you do talk about it, it won't happen. Well, look, talk about it. Let's minimize the chances that we can have a successful game out there. And a game. again, the pregame is so important. So here's our first opportunity here to have a little interaction. So think about tonight our theme of communication devices. And for some of you that are maybe a little bit older on the call, I want you to think about the name of our exercise. That's a Dave Matthews song. And whoever is the first person in the chat to get this right will get something from me. So again, in the chat, if you can name our exercise tonight with the theme of Dave Matthews, you'll be getting something upon my return from Utah. Oh, we got a winner. Doug, if you would click on this slide, please. So for those of you who are DMB fans, the infamous song, What Would You Say? That's going to be the name of our exercise tonight. And I will go back into the chat and we will make sure that we take care of business here. It looks like uh, Nick Hedstrom was one of the first people to get that. So Nick, I will get your information. Cat, uh, Mike Daniels. Mike Thank Daniels you. beat him to the punch. So I will get you, my, I'll get you both of their information. Give him, give them both for me, please. And, and I'm, as Jason just alluded to, I'm glad it wasn't crashing to me either. That would be very inappropriate for this exercise. 
Uh, listen, what we're going to do right now, I've contacted a few people. Uh, Doug, if you could bring Sam Jalier in from New York, and we are going to do a little exercise. So what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is we're going to look at a clip. And in each particular clip, the referee will be me. The AR, if it's designated for that particular clip, will be the person we bring in, or maybe even the fourth official. They are going to watch the clip and tell me what they would say to me on this particular clip. So, Doug, if we could go to the first video. And, Sam, thank you for joining in from New York. I appreciate you taking time out of your night to join us. Doug, if you would play this, and, Sam, tell me what you would do in this situation as an assistant referee. Okay. Mark, thank you very much, uh, and thank you, Tori and Lance, for putting this together. It's been a great uh, summer series. Um, and thank you for the opportunity. No pressure here. Uh, <laughs> I, what, I would, what I would probably be starting to tell you, I mean, speed, 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 pressure, 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 challenge, challenge, challenge. One of those things. And in a very, um, what's it called? In a very uh, um, um, urgent way because of the speed with which is coming. You see it coming. I mean, you, you, you see the chase and you kind of see the referee kind of is a little further away and not, not keeping the same proportionate pace as to the speed that these two players are exhibiting. So you know there's going to be a challenge here. So you got to get that ref to 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 zone in on that situation. And, and if, if I'm seeing him in that position, because I have a, a, good, a great angle here, uh, you know. So, if you so Sam, very good analysis of what you're seeing here. Can you please tell the audience tonight, what would you say at this moment as this happens, please? Ah, <laughs> we... we 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 got to we, we got to talk or or, or uh, uh, misconduct misconduct uh, not a misconduct but uh, uh, you know uh, either caution at least a caution there for sure. Okay, good. Um, so so before that, Sam, would you would you say something else? Would I before the issuance of the card or before right. the? So, so here we go, Ray Sam. It's going to okay. play, and I want you to to act it and out I, as it happens. All right, and go, Doug. Pressure, 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 challenge. We got a card. We got a card. Let's talk. Okay. We got a card, Mark. We got to talk. Gotcha. So, Sam, just quick question. Would you be putting up your flag on this one? Absolutely. Okay. And why so? Because it's right in front of me. What am I doing there then? Very good. So, so Sam, just a little uh, advice here. So, because it's in front of you, right, and you notice the referee is a little bit away from play, Let's start out with foul, foul, foul. Fair? Absolutely, sure. Okay. So now, foul, 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 I blow the whistle. You notice I'm not issuing any misconduct. What are you going to tell me next? Card, card, card. Okay, that's great, but what color? Uh, in my opinion, this is, this is a red card because of the uh, one leg goes for the challenge and then the other leg sort of pins the, the knee, the leg of the uh, uh, um, opponent. And you can see he immediately grabs like his knee. So there's some sort of a hyperextension or maybe even some ligament damage based on that reaction of how he holds his leg high. Because where he gets him is not necessarily high, but, but the way he gets him, certainly the speed and the two legs, those are all clues to me that, that, that this is a red card in my opinion. Okay. So, Sam, I'm just going to kind of um, summarize what I've heard so far. So you would tell me, hey, foul, 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 I would blow the whistle. You would notice that I'm not giving any misconduct, and the next thing you would say is what? Let's talk. Okay. Let's talk. So beep. I bang my wrist. What are we talking about? Let, you you don't have what do you you don't have anything there? I mean, I <laughs> have yellow at least. Okay. I, so I you would, you would say to me, okay, that's a good start, Tom. So you would say, hey, I have at least a yellow, and I would say back to you, hearing that. Hey, Sam, you said at least a yellow. Are you thinking something else? Yeah, I, I think I think it's a, it's a it's an ejection. This is serious okay. foul play. Okay, that and that's great, Sam. So that listen, I, not that I don't trust you, but this is what we do at the higher levels. So we got to use our considerations here. Mm -hmm. I would then ask you, hey, what was the point of contact on the tackle? Uh, midway up the ankle and and uh, and knee. Okay. How much force was in this for you? Great force. Okay. So, therefore, you have a red card, Sam? I do. Okay. Hey, listen, 
Uh, Doug, Sam, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, you set the standard, my friend. So I can't <laughs> thank you enough for that. And thank you for joining in tonight from New York. Okay. Thank, thank you for, for, for giving me the opportunity. Thank you. And I hope everybody stays safe. And, and thank you so nice so for doing all this. Absolutely. Thank you. So, so Doug, if we can go to the next slide, please. Um, so look on this one here. Okay. Uh, communication with small details. Again, that's one of our considerations we talk about with FIFA and ISOA. AR should start the communication by saying foul, foul, foul. Now, I kind of was prompting Sam through this, which is okay. And, and, and this is what you should do as well. If the referee does not have misconduct there, the AR should say, I have a yellow card for reckless tackle. Or in this case, Sam said, hey, look, I have a red card and here's X, Y, and Z, Y using the considerations. And look, and he's entitled his opinion. Now, look, the fact that the referee doesn't take Psalm's information, Psalm did his job. He said, look, for me, I have a red card. But if the referee goes yellow, that's on him. The one thing I want to point out here, and Psalm picked up on this as well, the AR still uses basic mechanics by indicating a foul with the flag. Look at the proximity to the AR under this play. Now, Sam had to make me laugh there. He used his New York accent. What, are you kidding me? You don't have anything there? Hey, I like the New York flavor. I grew up in New Jersey, Sam. But in all seriousness, you still got to give the flag there because, again, we want you to be credible due to the proximity if you're the AR. So, Sam, again, thank you very much. Doug, we're going to go now bring in William Delgado. I know we're going now from New York to California, if I'm not mistaken. And, Doug, if you could bring up the next video, please. William, welcome. If you could unmute yourself. There we go. Welcome, hey, William. Guys, thank you, you for me? coming on. Hey, thank you, guys. Thank you for having me on. Okay. So, William, I know you've had a chance to preview the clip. Um, do you feel comfortable talking to me what you would say as it happens, or do you, would you like yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. of something? Yeah, no, no, no. This will be fine. Okay, so let's watch everyone. Foul, 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 foul. Okay. That's the very first thing I would say is if I see a foul there, well, first of all, this, this clip is a little tough because look at the time. We only have a minute and 15 left. And, and Doug, if you would half. pause so I can listen to William, please. William, go ahead. Thank you again. So, guys, the very first thing we got to keep in mind is here is the time of the game. We have a minute 15 left on the second half which means the game's about to end at some point. And this is, this is probably going to be the play they're either going to make or break whoever's going to win this match. So the first thing I want, I, I want to know is I want to know where my referee is at all times within the last two minutes of the game. I want That's to keep an eye on the ball. I want to keep Doug, an eye on the ball. Back, Doug, if you can go back to the video, and William, if you would keep continuing your thought process, please. So I want to know where the referee is right here. I know he's right there in the middle of play, so I'm continuing to look for the offside position maybe. I'm looking at the play. Keep looking, keep looking. I know the ref is somewhere up there by the D. Now I see a foul right here. So before I raise my flag, this is a very tough one to call because it was, it was tripping, and it's obvious to me because I'm close, but I'm not quite sure if the referee can see it from his position. So I'm probably going to hesitate raising the flag right away, and I'm probably just going to yell out, foul, foul, foul. If I, if I look up at that time and he's, he hasn't made the call, then at that point I'm going to raise my flag and call the foul for him. Okay, I would only feel comfortable doing that because to me, this is 100% foul in my view. And even with the replay in here, I can see that it is. Okay, so William, excellent stuff. I'm the referee now, and I'm going to say to you, hey, William, was that in or out for a penalty? What are you that's, the, that's the second thing that I'm looking for. When, once I hear your whistle, I'm expecting the referee to say, was that in and out, in and out? And this one, to call in and out for me, it's not as easy as calling the foul. Because the player's foot is like right on the line. So being whatever, 40 yards away, it's going to be a little tough to make that, that decision right there. So we'll probably stand at attention, wait for him to come over, and then we'll have a little conversation on what I think and give him my, my recommendation or whether I think it's inside or outside. Now, it's, if I'm going to tell the referee whether the ball was inside or outside, I need to be 100% sure that it is what I'm trying to say, or I'm just going to say I'm not 100% sure. Because I don't want to be making that decision for him to call the PK or not if I'm not 100%. William, excellent analysis thus far. So here, here's where you make your money. You already said, look, last minute in the game, right? Tough decision. Right, right. In or out for you as the AR. From where – and let me, let me preface this by saying, think about 
the position you would be on the field as an AR on this play? Can you judge it from where you would be standing if this is in or out? I think I would because the, the, the guy's making a cut to the left first. So his left foot is already inside the, in, inside the penalty area. His right leg seems to be just inside or at the worst right on the line. So for me, I would, I, I would say this play would be in. So that would be my, my information to ref would be, in my opinion, the right foot was on the line when he got tripped. This would be a penalty kick. Yeah, so William, th this is what's difficult about this one. Uh, and again, this is what's difficult about this exercise too, is, you know, really if we got out on the field and you're 25, 20 yards away from the vertical line of the penalty area, yep. it'd be very hard to difficult, very hard to decipher. I think it's a little easier from the views we have on the camera here and that's okay. Exactly. But um, William, I, I would suggest here, okay, obvious foul here. Can we, can we not even debate that? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so look, you're going ahead and saying foul, foul, foul. Okay, excellent. No, no problem there. Now the issue becomes is can the AR really go ahead and say standing at that position on the touchline if that's in or out? And I got to be honest with you, they really can. It's really, it really on this exactly, and, that, and that's why when the referee is telling me is it in and out, in and out, I would stand at attention and have him come over and discuss it with me because I would not be totally hundred percent making that call. But with the video, I can tell that it is. But if you're making me make the decision on the field, being that far away from that play, that would be a tough one to sell. So I probably would not be 100% on that one. Can I ask you a quick uh, question here, William? Sure. We have headsets, right? Yep. Do you think we bring more attention to this play by having a side-by-side -side conversation than if we just talk from distance? I don't think so because only because we're in the last minute of the play. I think every everybody knows this is a key match incident. So everybody's wait. This is this is what's going to make or break the call. So I think in this particular moment, if this was earlier in the game, maybe first half or beginning of the second half or something, yeah, it would just be easier for him and I just to talk from far away. But because of the situation in this particular moment, all the fouls. So everybody knows he's a foul. The question here would be: Is he going to be in? Or out, and I think by him coming over and having the conversation with me, we end up going with, or he end up going with, because ultimately he's the one who's going to make that final decision. But I think this so, will appease the coaches, knowing that hey, at least I went there. Because if if he's going to make that that decision from where he's at, everybody's going to be complaining about their call, starting with the defender of players, starting with them for sure. So by so him really, coming over, I think that brings credibility to the decision. So, William, it's 2020. If I'm coming over to talk to you, do we need to be mindful <clears throat> of something? Mindful of all the players coming over behind him. So, yeah, he would have to make sure. How about, how about well, myself and you? Because it's 2020 and we're in a unique time. Well, for one, I don't want to be making any hand, any hand gestures or any, uh, any, uh, any physical descriptions of what I saw. Everything should be on the headset itself just talking. Because right now the only decision is whether it was in or out. So that yeah. should be between him and I only. The, the one thing I would kind of just want to implant in you, William, is maybe think about, unfortunately, COVID, and maybe we need to be a little social distancing there, right? Uh, <laughs> All right, you, you're right, you're right. Yeah. Hey, but um, hey, you know what? I, I we're already in the game, so I, if yeah. we're in the game, it's because all of us are safe. So I don't know if uh, social distancing <laughs> there would be uh, required. Hey, listen, William, I really want to thank you for this. We actually have the assistant referee that was on this play on this call. Kalaf, oh. welcome. And then can you share with us a few thoughts on this briefly? Yes, absolutely. How is everybody doing first? We're well, Kalaf. Thank you for joining. Thank you. I was AR2 in this situation, you know, and it was, yes, it was the last minute of the game. And it's like, uh, this is a decision you have to make to make it. You know, it's like the moment of the truth, you call it. You know, so the communication between my referee, uh, I, I called the foul, I said foul, foul, foul. Then he asked in or out. Uh, in my position, with my experience, this is a tough decision to take was in or out. So I told him I'm not 100% sure if it was in, you know. So he said, what you got? I said, I give 98% was in but i'm not sure not 100 percent it was in you know Thank so you, i Kyle. couldn't so i couldn't give him 100 percent. it was like in or out then gotcha. uh, the, communi the communication between me and him he said i thought to, i mean he is 100 percent sure it was in so kalaf one quick question did you raise your flag on this i couldn't tell 
Yes. Gotcha. Kalaf, thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate that live uh, in in depth knowledge on this one. And Doug, Thanks, if we Doug. go to the next slide. Thanks, Mark. Stay safe, stay safe Kalaf. Did we lose Mark? Oh, there he is. There he is. Welcome back. Um, You're on mute. There you go. Thank you. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Anyway, uh, just some guidance on this play. Um, first of all, Kalaf pretty much hit the nail on the head. The referee can really, AR, excuse me, can only really indicate foul in this play. The one thing that we're really preaching is the referee must own decisions along the vertical line of the penalty area, especially in front of the AR. You know, if we think about the old traditional diagonal, you'll never be able to get this. You've got to come off your quote-unquote diagonal. And if we can go back to our FIFA considerations and, FIFA and NICELA considerations, the optimal position is the one that gets you the best view. And on this one, we've got to deviate, get towards the right of the penalty arc to own that penalty area decision along the vertical line. The AR cannot give advice if a foul is inside the penalty area unless it is clearly inside and you even heard Kalaf who was the AR on this play say look I'm only about 98 percent so ARs you can give the foul advice no no problem there but referees you've got it what I call protect the vertical line that is your area to decide the decision if it's in or out and Kalaf and William thank you for that next we're going to bring in Caitlin Trowbridge Caitlin welcome I know you're going to be coming on here in a second and Caitlin, we're going to be looking at a video clip here, which involves offside. So let's get Caitlin on. And just for the record, Mark, Caitlin was probably on six of the eight NISOA uh, Wall of Fame <laughs> for the stimulus quiz. So this should be easy yes, for her. Yes, <laughs> Caitlin, can I get some of that prize money, please? I only got it once. So. Okay, got it. <laughs> Hey, Caitlin, how are you today? I'm doing good. Thank you. I hope you're doing well during this unique time. Have you had time to look at this video? Yes, I've had. Caitlin, can we, can we just play it through and you can tell me what you would say? Does that work? Sure. Yeah. Okay, let, let's hear it. So then there's not much going on right now. But you can see that momentarily that you'll see there's a cross coming in, a header, and then a second shot. So here, I would identify as the AR that she is in an offside position, right? So I would just say position number. Okay. Yeah, so. So, so now I'm the referee, I say, mm -hmm. okay, position number, and let's say it's number nine. Position number yeah. nine, Caitlin, position number nine was off at the time of the shot, and you would say? Yes. Okay, and then I would say, did she make a play on the ball? Oh, so you want me to determine interference? Yes. Uh, I would say that she moves towards the ball, but I, um, I can't really tell in the clip if she actually touches. Okay. Do you feel she gets involved in the play? Yes. Good. And what's your reason? Because she makes a movement towards the ball. Okay. Good. Yeah. So I would, I would basically have position and interference, like those two pieces for sure, while the referee would clearly – have the um, piece of it came from a teammate. Absolutely. So let's do this, Caitlin and Doug. We're going to wind it back. And Caitlin, without saying I would do this, I would do this, just okay. flat out say what you would do. Flat out say is just like it was the game. Okay. All right. Let's play it, Doug. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Good, good, good. Position nine. Position, position nine. nine. Position nine. Caitlin, at the time of the shot, she was offside? Yes. Okay. I have her line of vision. Did she make a play on the ball as well? Yes. Offside, offside. Thank you, Caitlin. Well done. <laughs> okay. So, look, Caitlin, excellent job on that. 
Notice everybody on the call what we have to do here. This is a teamwork effort. Notice Caitlin was spot on. Position, position, position. After the goal is scored, help, help, line of sight. So, you know, we can add in there the number that actually helps make the decision a little bit simpler for the referee. But once Caitlin gives that information, it's now up to the referee to determine the line of sight. And it's even easier because if you notice in this clip, the attacker plays the ball with her left foot. You can see clearly that she makes a playing action, even though she doesn't touch it. So Caitlin, I'm sad that you got bounced off already. That was spot on. Excellent job on that, Caitlin, and thank you for your participation. And as we get ready for clip number four, in which we're going to bring Matt Rodman in, I just want to really emphasize that Caitlin did a great job of analyzing that as well. You could see her kind of not just only looking at who was involved, who, who wasn't involved. That was kind of in her thought process as she was talking it out. So excellent job by Caitlin there. You know, I see a lot of things in the chat about do we really need to talk about jersey number or things like that. In this play here, I think because the attacker is in isolation, I think it's pretty obvious that there's only really one player who gets involved. And then that way it's even easier to really punish the offense there. Matt Rodman, welcome from Missouri. How are you, sir? Very good. How about yourself? I figured it was only appropriate that you get a Missouri clip. What do you think? Uh, that's fair enough. All right. Matt, you have, you've had a chance to see the clip, I presume? I have. Okay. Matt, we're going to pause you one second. If I can get everybody to get into the chat, we're going to watch the clip on this one. And I would like for everybody on the chat to put who should get involved in this. Now, you notice this is along AR1's touchline. So let's go ahead and on this clip, put who should get involved on this play. Doug, if you would play this and then we'll have our chat. So now after seeing this play, if everybody would put in here, who should get involved in this play? And we'll take about 10, 15 seconds to let people go ahead and do this. Five. Four, three, two, and one. If you want to keep on there, that's fine, but I'm going to go ahead and work with Matt here. Matt, if you would unmute yourself. Okay. Matt, talk to me on this play. You're assistant referee one. What would you do? Talk to me. Uh, as the trail AR here, I'd probably say uh, ball, just to let the referee know that the ball is being played through. Um, it's going to be a long ball played, uh, played up the, his uh, left side. Um, other than that, I don't really have much to say as the, as the trail AR. Um, once this challenge kind of comes to a head with this defender and attacker here, I think it's mostly going to be the referee um, that's going to have the best um, proximity to the play, uh, with the fourth official potentially having um, an angle to be able to help um, and assist, um, having that kind of opposite side of the body that the referee will have um, view of the play. So, Matt. It's pretty obvious the referee calls a foul here, correct? Correct. All right. Now let's go a step further. Referee calls the foul. Do you still need to get involved or are you good? Uh, so I'm only going to get involved um, in this situation, I think, um, if I feel the game needs it or if the referee asks me if he needs help. Um, so if the severity of the foul is so bad that this has to be dealt with and I think something needs to be done a la an ejection, um, if it's needed to maintain control, um, or if we're just going to make a really big mistake in this game, um, or if the referee asks it. Um, and if the referee asks, what do you have? I'm going to say, in my opinion, watching this play, um, I have a yellow card for a reckless challenge. Um, the point of contact is the kind of back of the leg, back of the thigh that causes your leg to buckle, uh, mode of contact being the outside of the leg, and there's moderate force with some ability to play the ball is what I would say is the fourth. Um, but I think I would only do that if I was asked. 
um, because I think the referee has the best uh, view in the house to uh, make this decision. All right, Matt, you just took stole the thunder there. That's where I wanted to go with this. So talk to me in just summary. What's what's your decision not to go and be as assertive giving information because of the referee? Um, I think as we've as you mentioned earlier, the referee uh, makes the final decision um, and makes those big decisions on how to control the match. And um, if it's not something that's going to um, kind of take the train completely off the rails, you have to trust your trust your leader and, and trust that he or she is going to uh, make the right decision and, and support that. If if you don't see that something that's 100 percent wrong. Matt, excellent synopsis there. It's great hearing your voice and stay safe in St. Louis, my friend. Thank you. All right, let's go to the next slide, Doug. Listen, let's be honest. Referees need to own this decision. And I see a lot of people in the chat who said that. You know, the referee obviously calls the foul. I like the fact that Matt said he would not get involved here unless he was asked or he really thought because of the temperature of the game, the climate of the game, it really needed it. Let's talk about the fourth for a second. Maybe the fourth could assist with point of contact, but let's be honest. One of our themes tonight, is the referee in a credible position? The answer on this one is yes. So ARs, and maybe this wasn't even a thought process, but maybe you've got to maybe not even see this because you've got to follow the second to last opponent who's moving upfield. So this may be something that's not even registering here. So the, the point of the story on this one is referees need to own it. But I do like the fact that Matt has experience, and he knows this for a fact, if the referee does ask, hey, do I, what, am I missing something here? And Matt goes, you know, I have point of contact this much speed. For me, it's a yellow card. There's nothing wrong with that. But notice how Matt didn't do that right away. He only did that when prompted, and I would advise that for the fourth official as well. So, Matt, excellent synopsis there. And our last exercise clip, we're going to bring Asad Amanovich. Pride of Iowa. So as we're queuing this up, we want to welcome Assad. Assad, welcome. How are you, sir? I'm good, Mark. How are you? Good. Hey, Assad, I, I know you've had a chance to view the clip. And what I want you to do right now is you are not the AR. You're actually going to be the fourth official. Yep. So Assad, let's play it and tell me your thoughts, please. Okay. Right now, I would be getting closer to the line, getting on the mic, and saying, foul, foul, foul. Okay. So, good start. What is the foul for you on this play? And Doug, if you can go back to that, that would be great. Might be hard to tell, Assad, but maybe if you don't pick up on it, I'll maybe walk you through it. What do you see? Right there, I saw a swing back at uh, from White. Uh, I on the video, I don't have a point of contact, honestly. Uh, okay, but I do have okay. a swing back. So, Assad, I'm going to tell you up front. He connects in the player's face. What are you going to do okay. now? I am getting your attention, Mark. Foul, foul, foul. I'm getting on my mic, getting closer to the play. Screaming in, Mark, foul, foul, foul. Okay. Uh, Assad, I see, it. I see the white team has advantage, and I'm going to say play on. Okay. At Are this you point, okay with that? I would not be. I would say okay. I have information. I have information. Okay. And from there, it's on you to take it or leave it. Okay. But Assad, we're playing on. I'll, I'll get you in a second. Okay. Are you okay? Are you okay with that, Assad? I'm not, but – I have to respect your wishes and I'll let it go until the next stoppage, which happens at this point. Uh, and then I would go back on the mic. I have information. I have information. At that point, I'd also have to be dealing with the coaches. So, <laughs> What made you think that, Asad? <laughs> so, Asad, here's face. a thought. Yeah. Asad, this isn't fair to you. What did we not do before the game? Pre-game. So what do you think we would do in the pre-game? My pregames are always discussing this information, especially when we have a fourth. Uh, I'm not sure how many people have the opportunity to be fourths, obviously, in ISOA, uh, collegiate games, D1 games. There's a greater opportunity, but I would 
go through with them and discuss their uh, responsibilities. And if they have any questions, uh, I would give them my information on what I expect out of them. For example, when this situation arises, I'm looking for information that's clear, concise, who, what, when, where. Uh, I don't, personally, I don't like hearing, I think this happened, uh, maybe this happened. I wanted 100% that this happened and go from there. As Todd, what I would tell you if I was the referee and you were my alternate official, I would say, Assad, if we have a red card offense, I want you to get on the mic and say, stop play, stop play. Okay. And that's not fair to you because we didn't have a pregame, did we? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So listen, we've stopped play now. Okay. I come over to you. What are you going to tell me? White, uh, strike to the face, whatever his number is. Uh, basically, that we have a strike to the face. Uh, there's a swing back with his arm and I believe fist correct? Uh, whether it's open or closed. Keep it, keep it simple aside. Use your considerations. Hey, contact to the face, excessive force for me, red card, violent behavior. So aside, you say all that to me and I say, all right, no problem. Are we done? We need to determine which number obviously. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, let's I just say we number, are done. number 10. Okay. So Doug, if you could get towards the end of the clip here, Aside, what's the restart? Oh, restart. <laughs> yeah. yeah Good see? point. Good point. Uh, yeah, we'd have to discuss the restart, which would be a direct free kick. For who? Black. Because Black. remember, the play was stopped, right? Yeah. Yep. So, Correct. Aside, there's a lot going on here, isn't there? There is. Uh, watching the clip the first time, I was kind of confused. Uh, had to watch it a second time and kind of caught on. Yeah. So, so look. Listen, being a fourth official, you know, you get paid the least of the crew. It's probably the hardest of the job, right? <laughs> it, one is, of the things, it is. One of the things we got to be mindful of, okay, is when we have these very tense situations, we need to be in control of our emotions. Obviously, you mentioned the coaches. You even saw the little flash <laughs> of them coming at you. But we need to make sure that we pay attention to the details. So, Asad, excellent job. And hopefully, you know, when we act out situations like this, it doesn't happen in your games, but maybe if it does now, hey, we're ready to react to it. What do you think? Absolutely. One step closer to getting right on the field. Lance, thoughts? Yeah, Asad, thank you very much. This clip is very difficult because there's a lot going on. And as a fourth official, too, you have active benches that you're dealing with. Uh, you have substitutes that are right there. So there's a lot going on. Then all of a sudden, you have this incident that occurs behind the referee's back while play is progressing. So it's very easy to lose track of who committed the foul, which team has possession of the ball, when should I tell the referee? So there's a lot you have to prioritize. You know, one of the things I was talking about in the, in the group chat here was <clears throat> making sure you get the number of the player who committed the foul. You have to get that number to help the referee. Also, if you have video review available, you can go to video review here to figure out who did it and if violent behavior occurred. And you can go to video review to, to determine the level of violent behavior that occurred. But we're not gonna focus too much on that. I know there's a lot of chatter right now on, is this one, is this two? All I will say is July 18th, we will have Ryan Sigich and Ken Andrus on our, on our show to uh, dive deeper into the violent behavior rule change. So stay tuned. Asad, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Good seeing you, man. Good seeing Asad, you. Asad, thank you. That was not easy. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you, Mark. So, Doug, if we can go to the next slide, please. So there's a lot going on here, and that's why you see so many bullet points. And Asad really did a good job of, of doing some things with that particular incident. Obviously, the fourth official is the one who sees this. The recommendation I would have is, Stop play, stop play. Because notice the side there said foul, foul, foul. Well, I'm thinking, hey, maybe that's a foul against the black team. And now we're on the attack and we're playing advantage. So once we get play stopped, obviously the referee needs to get information. Alternate officials, make sure that we get all of the information, including the restart. And I know that's sometimes a mundane fact, but in this play, it's very important. So obviously, 
I would hope Assad and uh, whoever else will be in this situation would use the considerations. An example here, no play on the ball, excessive force, illegal use of the arms, which endangers the safety. And then again, don't just put it on the fourth official to remind themselves or the alternate official of the restart. Referee, don't be afraid to say, hey, what's the restart? Is it a free kick here or where? Make sure you be a part of that decision as well. Mark, so, question for you. No. Uh, from the group chat, they want to know recommendations on how to handle the coaches in this situation when you need to get critical information to the referee. It's going to be very difficult. And my advice to you is please give me the opportunity to talk to the referee first. One of the things I can't emphasize enough is you need to be composed. You can't just go in there saying, coach, sit down. I got it. Rah, rah, rah. Remember how inflamed they are. Coach, please give me the opportunity. Please give me the opportunity. I think, Lance, your, your favorite phrase about bees is what? You get more bees with honey than you do vinegar. And that applies in these very tense situations here. Now, again, you can always, if the coach really isn't going to listen to you, remind them of what their technical area is. Coach, you're out of the area. Please don't make me have to caution you here when I might have to deal with the other player. That would be foolish. One of the things that I love from the great Steve Olson of Minnesota, put the guilt back on them. If that coach, and he knows he's upset, you know he's upset because his player just received an elbow, but, you know, he's being out of line, tell him, look, I don't want to have to caution you here. Please work with me. Go back to your area. Okay? So that was great. I, I can't thank Sam, William, Caitlin, uh, Matt, and Asad for doing that. And that was not easy because we didn't have a pregame. And they don't see the little particulars of the clip, but they did a great job. And hopefully maybe they just polished a few things going forward. And hopefully everybody on this call did as well. You know, I really make a conscious effort when I present to use clips from the games that we officiate for that particular presentation. And unfortunately for these last couple, two of the three, I had to dive into another sector of soccer, soccer but I really think it's important. So here is some higher level calm advice. Um, if I could bring in somebody here uh, to look at this clip and Doug, if you would play the clip, and if we could get Lance to bring somebody in, I want to see their opinion of this. Okay, I see Alex Connolly, the pride of Louisiana on the call. Doug, can you play this one more time? And Alex, in your very relaxed state there, can you tell me what you see? Alex, don't forget to unmute yourself. So initially, we see them going into the top of the box. Uh, my connection's a little poor, so it gets a little blurry for me for a second. Okay. And, and um, Alex, I'm just going to pause you real quick. Doug, can you go to the very beginning of the clip again? And Alex, this time, focus right at that halfway line. What do you see? You see the uh, you see well the the defender in white coming in, getting the uh, the attacker. Looks like it's a slightly late after he plays the ball through um, right there at midfield in front of the view of the referee. Looks like it's uh, not in front of the fourth official. Uh, so the referee has the clearest view of it. Uh, Black plays it through. Okay, so right Doug, go ahead and continue the clip, please. At this point, Black is still attacking. So I don't know if you picked up on it, Alex. Doug, if you can go back just a few frames. Notice what the referee does after that challenge. He's playing the advantage. Okay, so we play the advantage, okay? He's allowing play to continue as he first challenge, What do you notice, Alex, in the first challenge in the penalty area? Black receives the ball and goes to turn in. Uh, after receiving the ball, the uh, defender in white, to me, looks like he uh, basically trips him up as he's trying to make his way towards goal before he can even get a shot off. Uh, he has the ball under control because he's able to turn the body and, and redirect the ball 
to go towards the inside of the box. Unfortunately, Alex, where's the referee? The referee is out of the line of view. You can't you can't see him in here. So really, it opened it up AR two to really have to step in and try and be part of the decision making process. And as Murphy's Law would have it, what does that, the white team do? They go ahead and have a wonderful looking counter attack and uh, put the ball in the back of the net. Alex, what do you think with our theme of communication systems happened potentially on this play? Uh, well, I think what, what, well, what probably happened is AR2 hopefully communicated the fact that they had a foul before uh, they, they let the play come through before restarting play. Hopefully it's communicated that there's an initial foul at, in the box so they can disallow the goal and go ahead and, and penalize for uh, the foul after the advantage was played. Doug, if you would go to the next video, please. Here's what's absolutely bizarre about this play, Alex. So if we play it, Doug, obviously we have a challenge here, okay? Now, Doug, if you would pause it right there. What do you notice behind the AR? He's looking back to see. It looks like he's looking to see where the referee is, but he also has the play of view in. Behind the AR. Oh, oh, it looks like uh, I'm assuming that's the team bench, and I'm assuming that's the coach. It's probably going pretty pretty crazy right there. So, so Alex. Uh, arms up probably being quite vocal if I had to imagine. Alex, a little backstory. I was the fourth official in this game. And what happens is the referee plays advantage. All of a sudden we hear in the mics, red card, red card, and the referee is now startled. Why do you think that happened? Uh, probably because I would, I would imagine he doesn't know, maybe he doesn't know what's going on. I mean, the play's right in front of him. He's applying advantage. But at the same time, if somebody's calling for a red card, red card, maybe he doesn't know who it's coming from. Who do you think was calling for the red card? I would imagine the person with his arms up in the air. So how did that get transmitted to the referee? Um, I mean, I'm sure it goes through the comms. He doesn't know who says it. So at that point, he doesn't know who the information is coming from. Spot on, Alex. Thank you, Alex. And please be safe back in Louisiana. Thank you, y'all as well. All right. So if we go to the next slide, Doug. So additional advice to consider when you are the assistant referee one, be mindful of the noise that can be picked up through the AR one's mic. And obviously the referee will hear that. So Doug, the next slide. You know, and Kat, uh, just to add on that too, that is especially important in the collegiate game because what is different in the collegiate game versus our youth games that we do versus our amateur games versus our professional level games. Well, the players can stand in the technical area. And especially in the women's games, they will stand the entire team and they will push the boundary limits of that technical area. They will cheer their teams on. They will have chants for their players. So it can be very loud and very distracting uh, as AR1 or even the fourth official even with the referee. So that's why it's very, very important. We, we continue to go back to pregame. We continue to go back to pregame because it's all about the pregame here. So the advice, again, is be mindful of it. Do I have a way to prevent this? I don't. The only advice I can give you is if you are the referee and you've got a situation in front of the bench, be hypersensitive to this outside interference. And don't just react to what you hear on the mics. And unfortunately, we, we, we learned the hard way on that particular play there. So, Doug, next video, please. Uh, I know we're running out of time. Quickly on this play, tell me if there is misconduct, and if so, what there is. Go. So if you could quickly put your decision in the chat box.
and we'll give a 10 second countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and keep putting them in there. But if we can go to the next slide here. So I see a lot of people are saying this is reckless. This is yellow card. That's great. But keep in mind, and so we get to the higher level advice here, as an AR or fourth official, you can remind the player if the referee is already on a yellow card. So this one's hot off the press. Uh, your person who's helping moderate tonight was actually the fourth official in this game. This actually happened the 4th of July, and the player who commits the foul was already on a yellow card. Both the moderator and the AR both said, referee, she already has a caution. This is good assistance. This is not insisting. So it's now up to the referee to make the decision to send the player off or not, but it's a good reminder to help the referee to remind them, hey, that player is already on a yellow card after they commit that offense. So kudos to the crew on that one there. Uh, we can get into whether that's a yellow card, second yellow card, all that stuff. But the point I want to make on this one is as fourth officials or ARs, and if it's in your proximity, don't be afraid to go ahead and say, hey, don't forget, Lance, that's number 13's already on a yellow card if the referee wants it. And again, the pregame is where it comes in there. The last one here, and I know we're running a little over, so I'll go through it pretty quickly. We can play this clip here. So if we notice here, we have a boundary decision. We have the fourth official in close proximity. And as the clip plays out, you'll see that the decision was reversed. So a couple things I want us to think about on this play here is again, notice the location. It's closer to the fourth official, alternate official than it is the AR. So if we go to the next slide, Doug. Boundary decisions between the fourth official and AR need to have a priority of who is closer for information. We don't wanna have cross signals like this and we don't want people speaking at the same time. So again, going to pregame, and this is a little bit more advanced, make sure that we're given decisions that are between the fourth official and AR. You delegate who is to get on the mics on that particular situation there. So that's the point of the additional advice, higher level calm advice. Doug, the next slide, please. So in summary, you know, we always can go back to our analogy of we can use a screwdriver to put a screw in the wood, or we can use a power drill. Well, same thing with soccer officiating. We could still use the flags. We could still use the cards. We could still use the whistle. But look, the headsets make it easier. But let's make sure that we use those basic mechanics and just say, okay, let's put a little polish on it, make it a little higher level when we use the comm systems. And lastly, I can't emphasize this enough, and I'm so happy to see this at the collegiate level, the NISOA and FIFA considerations, when you're giving information, especially on misconduct, let's use those. Point of contact, mode, speed, those types of things are going to be very beneficial in making our decision-making accuracy. Lance, Tori, it's actually been a blast doing this, but more of an honor. As I mentioned before, NISOA is always special in my heart because it played such a role in my development. And to be asked to come on here and talk about this topic is just so I just I'm, I'm astounded considering the other panelists and other people you've had on here. So I can't thank you guys enough. Lance, Tori, thank you. And if anybody has any questions, I guess you guys are on it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mark. What an amazing presentation. It's something we don't talk about often enough with enough detail. Um, so thank you so much for taking the time. I The chat has been going nonstop about thank you so much for this. Um, it was great to see the interaction between officials and putting them on the spot a little bit, but that's how we learn. And that's a safe spot for us to learn. So hopefully everybody got a little bit out of that. And like Mark said, take three things away. I know I um, even was adding things to my pregame on my cell phone while you were talking, Mark. So I definitely took some things away and I'll implement them hopefully uh, soon as tomorrow, perhaps. So thank you, Mark. We appreciate it.
Um, and then so for everybody on the phone, on the line, uh, please don't forget we have continuing education throughout the entire summer. So here right in front of us that Doug has up here, we've had our Alex Proust presentation. We also had our TED Talk with Ted. Um, we just had ours with Mark. Those are all gonna be available on YouTube, Mark, um, Alex's and Ted's are already up. So if you miss those, you can go ahead and go on YouTube channel and check those out right now. And then obviously we have Corey's coming up here at July 14th. So be aware of that. But more quickly than that, just this weekend, um, July 11th, we kick off our start of our rules changes. So really important that we all try our best to attend all four of these sessions. And if you're not available during the times and dates that they're um, listed, no problem. They'll all be available on YouTube. So you can go to YouTube and check them out. And we highly encourage every member should be doing this. Um, this is really, really critical for us to be successful this fall. We've got to understand the difference and the rule changes. And it's not just a lift up from IFAB. There are some nuances. So it's super important that we're really familiar with that. And we're going to have some special guests on each one of these sessions um, that are going to help us um, as Lance has alluded to. And we also have one more joint webinar um, on the books as well. So please, please, please join us this Saturday uh, for our first um, event following this one. Um, and it will be moderated by myself as well as Lance. We'll also have Todd and Ken Andres on um, from the Rules <clears throat> Changes Committee. So we're super excited to have that firsthand knowledge. And of course, if you're not familiar, weekend workouts with Trent. We have Coach Trent doing our weekend workouts on the weekends. Um, Lance, I think, tapped out. He did one and he was he was cashed out. That's so it. All that. Oh, nice. So is tired of seeing me, okay? So I want to give other people a chance to feel the burn. No. <laughs> and please use hashtag NISOAFIT. In your images and videos, we've been aggregating those and we're going to do some raffles and you'll get some Lulu and our OSI gift cards. So you'll get some swag to help you stay fit and be prepared for the season. So please use the hashtag NISOAFIT and all your pictures associated with your summer training. Um, and then of course, this, as we've said a hundred times, but I'll say it again, it will be available on YouTube. So please check it out on YouTube. I know some people are asking about getting the presentation. If we can see it afterwards, it'll be available on YouTube. You can go watch it again and again, screenshot some of those charts that, that Mark had if, if you so choose. Um, and then lastly, but certainly not least, there will be a post survey link that will pop up as soon as you exit um, today's webinar. And if you wouldn't mind taking just five minutes to fill that out, that'll help us directly understand if we're going in the right way and we're helping you guys and these webinars are valuable for you so really important for us is to get your guys's feedback and that's the way you do it so please 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 take five minutes to fill out that survey we would really really appreciate it and then of course thank you again mark thank you so much for um, all the effort that you put into this presentation and the nuances about communication devices we can't talk enough about this stuff undoubtedly and of yeah, course doesn't... never ends productions thank you doug and lana there they are in their tent Hey guys, thank you guys so much for helping us be a seamless production. We appreciate all that you guys do um, for us to make these webinars awesome. And thank you, Lance, for your help always in the moderating and charting. It's always fun to work together. So thanks to you guys, and we will see you hopefully on Saturday. Thanks, Mark. Thank you guys, it was an honor. All right, let's get that survey popped up.